opportunity to welcome first anand uh, dr anand sarde mook for this uh, kirloskar chair session of this month i also welcome all the other participant those who are join, uh, join online we are meeting after i think two or three months and uh, i can i will assure you next month i will organize offline meeting at kumba or some other place in the university so now i request gaurav to introduce uh, dr anand sardesh thank you sir thank you so we have a very big stalwart from the industry today dr anand sardesh mukh was the past director general and a member of the board of the maratha chambers of commerce and industry and agriculture he has over 40 plus years of industry experience completed his phd in management from uh, savitri bai phule pune university and also done his masters in business administration from us illinois state university sir also he's been on the board of directors of many other elite companies like badwe engineering etc he has a professional full time uh, career with these companies now he is also into some consultancy he has also done many uh, wonderful uh, startup uh, ventures and helped people but i won't go ahead and open the box entirely we leave something for sir to come and discuss more details are also available on his website www.anandsardeshmukh.in so without wasting more time i'm handing over to you sir thank you so much yeah thank you thank you very much uh, gaurav and uh, good evening to everybody indeed it's my pleasure to be here uh, with you on this uh, platform and i'm indeed thankful to uh, sl kirloskar chair of uh, savitri bai pune uh, university uh, savitri bai phule pune university and i'm also thankful to my uh, very old and friend captain chitare for uh, having given me this opportunity to have a dialogue with uh, all of you uh this uh, you know uh, i think this i'm also very privileged to be on uh, this uh, ds uh, and talking to all of you because all, we all know that late sri shantanu rao el kirloskar is a doyen was a doyen of uh, indian industry especially the maharashtrian industry and uh, he also you know was president of the chamber of commerce where i served for many years and he was also president for the chamber for almost 11 years and he did a wonderful contribution to not only the industry in maharashtra outside all and also to the chamber so it's indeed my pleasure to be with you this evening mujhe bola gaya hai ki yahan par aaj जो स्टूडेंट्स है सावित्री बाई फुले यूनिवर्सिटी के कुछ आंट्रप्रनर्स है कुछ गेस्ट है विजिटर्स है उनके साथ कुछ फौजी भाई भी आए हुए हैं एंड इफ दे आर देयर इट्स इंडीड माय प्लेजर आल्सो टू इंटरेक्ट विथ हिम आपके जो इंस्टीट्यूशंस है उनके बारे में कैप्टन चिजले साहब ने मुझे बहुत कुछ बोला है मैंने देखा भी है and uh, i am indeed uh, very proud that uh, you know this beautiful work is being done in the city of pune for uh, the rehabilitation of soldiers brave soldiers like you and i have a special affinity for, towards uh, the fauji bhais because when i was in a school and i was young i think my first uh, ambition was to also be a fauji but i don't know what happened and and to i don't want to tell you all those kintus and parantus because the skintus and parantus are so bad in our life that they you know many times uh, you know become a hindrance in our career so i personally feel that we shouldn't have uh, kintus and parantus but uh, you know we should move ahead secondly i uh, i think uh, I, i also wanted to be fauji as i said lekin uh, ye jo uh, जो एफर्ट्स है वो हो नहीं हुए और कुछ वजह से आई कुड नॉट बी फाउजी यू नो दिस इसमें गलती तो मेरी है क्योंकि एक ऐसा बोला जाता है कि कथनी करनी एक सी होनी चाहिए इन माई केस इट वॉज एंड देयर दिस कथनी करनी एक सी इज अ ब्यूटिफुल यू नो डॉक्यूमेंट्री ऑन दी यू नो Doyen of again Indian industry, Jamalalal Ji Bajaj, 
and uh, probably you might have seen Raju Bajaj talking on this uh, on one of the uh, YouTube channels and all. And uh, it's a very interesting story of Jamnalal Bajaj. And Jamnalal Bajaj, when he was four years old, he wasn't Bajaj. He was staying in a very small uh, Rajasthan village. And one day he was uh, so one, uh, you know, big uh, uh, businessman called Bachoraj uh, Bajaj was uh, traveling, uh, was going uh, on that road in his buggy and he saw this uh, kid, Jamnalal Bajaj, and he liked him and then he stopped his buggy and unhone, un, uh, unse ki, Kahan rehte ho? So he said, Yehi baju mein rehta So he said, ki, Muzhe wale chalo. So uh, this little kid of four years took uh, Bachoraj uh, Bajaj to uh, his house. The mother opened the door and in a typical Rajasthani tradition, she asked uh, the guest to come inside and offered him a glass of water and all that. So Bachoraj Bajaj had a glass of water and then he asked uh, the mother, ki, whose uh, kid is this? And as we always say, especially the gaon ki, gaon mein jo jata hai, ki sab aapka hi hai, ghar bhi aapka hai, in that style, she said, uh, tharo hi hai. Ye bachcha tharo hi hai. That means, ye bachcha aap hi ka hai. So the, then uh, Bacharaj Rajguru said, oh, okay, good. Then I will take him with me. And uh, this poor lady got confused and frightened and she called uh, her husband and told the incidents to her. And uh, the husband said, Ki, Are bapre, aapne to abhi bol diya hai ki bachcha tharo hi hai. So now, ye jo apna आपने तो कमिट किया है ये कमिटमेंट पूरी करनी होगी तो आपने को अभी वो बच्चा उनको देना पड़ेगा तो दैट्स हाउ यू नो द जमनालाल बजाज गॉट एडॉप्टेड बाय बछराज बजाज एंड ही वेंट विद हिम एंड ही बिकेम अ बिज बिजनेसमैन दिस वाज डेस्टिन टू बी एंड दिस इज ऑल यू नो यू नो समथिंग द डेस्टिनीज प्ले आई वुड से but uh, the main thing to be learned from this and which later also became Bacho, uh, the Jamlalal Bajaj motto that uh, Kathni uh, Karni Ek Si, walk the talk. And that is, I think, is very important uh, in uh, everybody's life. And especially one, those who have decided to be entrepreneur, they should walk the talk they should ye je katni jo unhone ki hai je katni karni hai unki ek si honi chahiye and once having committed or once having said that i want to be an entrepreneur i think you should become an uh, entrepreneur only so well friend uh, today's uh, you know topic as we all know is something on entrepreneur and uh, entrepreneurship so uh, i think i will start with my presentation Okay, Gaurav? Yes, so sir, can, we can start. Yes, yeah. sir. Uh, can you see this uh, presentation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's not moving. I don't know. Space bar, I think you can try. It will, it will. Yes, sir. Next slide is... Ah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. So this, uh, as I, this session is on, uh, you know, mainly the, though the session has been titled as uh, uh, start up for your startup. That means, uh, you know, let's start for having your own enterprise, your own startup. But uh, who starts a startup or who starts an enterprise? That's the entrepreneur. And I thought probably it would be a good start to start with the definition of an entrepreneur. I think this definition you might have learned several times. You might have come across many, many definitions in different books, different articles, papers, and all that. And there is no single uh, uh, you know, comprehensive definition of uh, an entrepreneur. And uh, there are many, many. And you can follow whichever definition of an entrepreneur really motivates you. But the one definition which I have chosen says that an entrepreneur is one who organizes and manages any enterprise or any business and 
the definition says with a usually with a considerable initiative and risk here i differ with the definition i say that it's not considerable i would say it is a huge amount of initiative and risk with which this gentleman who is called to be as a, a entrepreneur has to manage and or first organize his business and then manage his own uh, business the two important words which have been underlined by me in this slide uh, uh, of uh, on the on the definition of entrepreneur is one is the initiative and risk initiative is a trait you know that trait comes to you and i think the for developing these kind of uh, traits there are many many factors which are responsible there is i personally believe uh, uh, that uh, there is no uh, gene involved in it and it is not a genetical trait or something but it's a trait which uh, is being developed uh, by <clears throat> an individual by the circumstances <coughs> circumstances and the experiences he had he had and other things also by the efforts of the individual too and risk of course yes uh, risk is something which is always there and we all take a different kind of a risk hum jo risk zindagi mein lete hai to har din ke jeene mein bhi risk hoti hai and with that risk only we move forward of course in a organization uh, of a promoted by an entrepreneur the risk is of different time and it is pursued as of a different type of risk by different individuals uh the risk you know the uh, the uh, there is a good uh, uh, quote from robert uh, t kiyosaki uh, who says that uh, everyone can tell you the risk aap jahan bhi jaoge jo bhi karoge to wahan aadmi log aur हो गए जो आपको बोलेगे कि इसमें रिस्क है भैया आप अगर स्विमिंग के लिए उतरेंगे तो समबड़ी विलास क्यों स्विमिंग आता है नहीं तो इसमें रिस्क है आप गाड़ी चलाने जाओगे तो भी बोलेंगे कि बाबा गाड़ी इतना ट्रैफिक खराब है गाड़ी चलाने में रिस्क है सो रिस्क इज एवरीवेयर बट एन आंट्रप्रेनर हु इज देयर हु ऑल्सो नोज दैट द रिस्क इज देयर इन अ बिजनेस वी ऑल नो देर इज अ रिस्क इन एनी टाइप ऑफ एन एक्टिविटी इंक्लूडिंग द बिजनेस एंड वी परस्यू the risk in a business to be more more you know harmful than any other risk and having a, a long term kind of an effect on all of us so this risk is being seen by everybody but an entrepreneur who is committed to his uh, his own idea uh, not doesn't see the risk in it what he sees is only the reward which he will get after indulging into that kind of an activity so uh, uh, robert kioski has rightly said that uh, everyone can tell you uh, the risk but an entrepreneur can see the reward in a particular activity and i think this is the most wonderful and beautiful definition of an entrepreneur one who sees a reward in a an in an activity which is considered to be risky i will call call him <coughs> as an entrepreneur going ahead uh, you know the uh basically the initiatives uh, of which we talked about that we need a initiative initiative is one of the two uh, and of two factor the risk and initiative we talked a bit about the risk and now the initiative as i said it's a trait which is present or which is inculcated by many of us without initiative nothing happens if you don't take any any initiative you won't move anywhere if and in your daily activities also we need certain initiatives initiatives to study initiatives to read initiatives to read even newspaper initiatives to go out and meet somebody and all that but that's a different kind of a initiative that's involved in our daily life but when you are thinking of an enterprise or even of uh, some development in your career or moving ahead or scaling higher heights of in your career i think that initiative is different and that initiative has to be developed by the individual the initiative can be developed by 
you generating your interest in particular type of activity studying about the activity knowing about the activity getting motivated to get into that kind of an activity and out of that comes the initiative but many times we see that we lack the initiative we don't feel like doing anything or we don't like uh, even uh, you know, knowing some success stories knowing some industrialists knowing some big people and all that still though to some extent we get motivated but that is to certain extent and beyond that the initiative uh, is not uh, helping us to push us ourselves forward so why we lack uh, initiative and one of the greatest reason is the fear of failure in each and every activity which we think of doing i think the first uh, thing which comes to our mind is the failure that i will fail what happens if i fail these are perceived kind of uh, experiences that you will have after getting into an activity or for that matter into an enterprise and the creation of enterprise or into entrepreneurship so this failure fear of failure is something which prevents us from doing whatever we feel like doing of course if the initiative is lesser it won't uh, push us beyond that uh, failure and we discuss about the fear of risk that also and the third one is the lack of confidence and the fourth one is fear of criticism lack of confidence you know many of us don't have that kind of a confidence in ourselves we lack that confidence we lack the confidence to uh, of getting into a particular type of activity or doing certain things even if we uh, start working somewhere sometimes if a bigger challenge is uh, in front of us if a bigger uh, you know activity is to be done we always feel that uh, we are always doubt ourselves that whether i will be able to do this so fear uh, of uh, and lack of confidence also adds to your risk and the combined effect of that is that you uh, don't move ahead and the fourth one uh, which is here is the fear of criticism you feel that what will happen if i fail in this activity because in our society you know failure is something which has been taken as uh, something which is near to i would say death you know if you fail nobody will talk good about you nobody will appreciate your efforts but only point at the failure and uh, i think that fear of criticism uh, you know many a times uh, uh, doesn't allow you to take the initiative which you are thinking about uh, fear of failure in fact uh, as i said we are always and most of the time many of us are in the negative uh, uh, you know frame of mind and we think always of the consequences which are not favorable to us but which are unfavorable to us we as we see, as i said earlier we think that i will fail i will not be able to do i will go bankrupt i will, my business uh, uh, i will lose everything then what will i do i nobody will give me uh, uh, an employment after uh, i i i, I and i face failure so these thing a type of uh, thinking of consequences constantly happens in our mind and most of the people are not able to get out of this then uh, i feel that uh, this kind of a thinking we are doing without realizing or without trying the what could be the result of this kind of an activity how will you know the consequences of your decision or what you feel unless and until you do that activity you always say that a decision right or wrong is proved only when the decision is taken and the consequences are in front of us so unless we take the decision the decision right or wrong is not proved and then i think this uh, is true for all the activities that any activity you do even though you have you are in a negative frame of mind and if you feel that this is not going to succeed but that is only uh, you know your thinking and unless and until you get into that activity and do that and see the consequences it will not be proved whether it was a success or a failure 
to me failure is more important than success because i feel that the success brings complacency in all of us one success and a lot of air goes around in our head and we start thinking uh, uh, you know a lot about ourselves we feel that we are expert we can do anything and unnecessary confidence or over confidence creeps in in our thinking and success again as they say is not permanent and at the same time uh, failure is not fatal so it is not that once you met with success or the success will be always there for you you know it the success depends on so many things and next time if you do an activity the factors the elements may go against you and instead of success you will face failure so i feel that the failure really teaches you it is the best lesson for you because if you know the reasons of your failure the factors which contributed to your fa failure i think that's the best thing to ensure that in all your future activities you will uh, you know face success you will get success so here is a definition of fail that with the where from the word failure comes fails i believe is the first attempt in learning and it's not me only many have said that from failure you need you learn many a things and even thomas alva edison i uh, know he we all know that he experimented thousands of time before uh, you know inventing the bulb and uh, he himself has said somewhere that i haven't failed i have just found 10000 ways that won't work so failure has taught him and has taken him to his ultimate success the invention of the bulb <clears throat> there is another beautiful definition of uh, an entrepreneur which is given by uh, c k prallad you all know dr c k prallad the management guru the author who promulgated the theory of uh, at the bottom of pyramid and uh, you know that helped many a uh, many a companies to come out with different strategies and have uh, you know good uh, uh, sales of their product uh dr ck pralad's definition is uh, a is greater than r in the case of an entrepreneur who is an entrepreneur an entrepreneur is one who in whose case a is greater than r that means a stands for ambition and r stands for resources so for an entrepreneur ambition is more than the resources so he can go beyond the resources to achieve his ambitions to get whatever he wants so the ambition the resources they never ever stop him from doing any activity they don't restrain him from taking any action or doing something which he which is his ambition or which he feels to do which he is thinking about of doing which is his dream at the same time he has also defined as a manager a manager is somebody whose ambition gets restricted by the resources which are available to him which is very true that the the, the manager cannot create his own resources uh, beyond a certain point and his ambition of taking uh, certain things or achieving certain things would be definitely restricted by the resources which are which have been given to him this uh, you know the we have seen the entrepreneur but i feel that an uh, manager is also equally important and especially the one manager who is at the helm of the affairs of a, a corporation or a, a company and who is managing certain things uh, you know uh, uh, very successfully or uh, who is looking after a large business so here comes a term called entrepreneur which is uh, an employee of a corporation who is given freedom and financial support to create new product and services and systems here also the risk element is there the risk as compared to an entrepreneur may be lesser but the risk is of different type he is managing the resources of uh, you know other entities other stakeholders so he has to be more careful 
So there is a very little difference between an entrepreneur and an entrepreneur. And even if you don't become an entrepreneur, and if you work for an organization, it is very essential for you to be an entrepreneur to see that the organization uh, for which you are working scales higher heights. So I think these two definitions, there is a very little difference. And one who is really looking after seriously uh, in doing something in his profession or career has to be aware of these two uh, you know, definitions and, and he has to be either an uh, in, uh, entrepreneur or entrepreneur. The one question which comes to all of us in our mind is uh, why entrepreneurship? Because many of us feel that uh, doing some job, getting a, some job is much more easier and peaceful than getting into this risky proposition of entrepreneurship. You know, the world scenario is changing. You know, we have uh, uh, seen that uh, there are certain uh, uh, developments, especially in the field of technology, which are happening very rapidly. We read, we hear a lot about uh, the terms like industry 4.0, which is the confluence of uh, machine and the computer driven systems and all that. And that has uh, you know, revolutionized the total manufacturing process. The sensors have come in and the sensors have again changed the entire manufacturing process. Then we have artificial intelligence, which has been brought in by the sensors and other electronic uh, uh, you know, devices. Then we have the machines learning. Artificial intelligence is taking away uh, you know, many of our difficult jobs. For example, we don't today, we don't require any programmers and all that because the machine or the computers and with the help of AI can write very, very extensive and exhaustive uh, programs and on which the entire system can run. Similar is the thing with uh, machine learning. The mach machine has become very, very intelligent it learns faster than a human being, and it can give a productivity which is much more higher than the human being or the individual. So definitely the opportunities for employment are getting eliminated or getting reduced. Here I'm saying opportunities for employment. I'm not saying opportunities to do something, opportunities to get into entrepreneurship. Because as industry 4.0, artificial intelligence, machine learning, all these uh, things and many other uh, you know, technological changes are happening, they are opening tremendous amount of opportunities and presenting opportunities to us, which has to be, I believe, to be taken up you know, in, an, in an entrepreneurial uh, initiative. We don't have uh, you know, enough uh, you know, growing businesses. One statistic says that India has about uh, 65 million plus businesses and about 95% of them are uh, self-employed. That means there is only one owner and one employee who works in that business. Uh, less than 2% of this number uh, employs uh, more than five people. So there are very limited number of uh, employees in that particular organization. And only 20,000 and odd have something, uh, you know, at a capital of uh, 10 crore and plus a share capital. So they are of some size, but as I said, the opportunities there too of getting an employment are getting reduced. And hence, uh, even we see the initiatives taken by the government of India as they are not able to meet the targets of employment generation and all that, they are emphasizing more and more on entrepreneurship or you know, doing something or on your own. So it's very difficult to meet the growing job demand in our country. I'm talking at all levels. And uh, you know, we also know that uh, the disguised employment in our country is uh, to a very greater extent I do an MBA 
in say finance, but I start selling credit card or I start selling a loan, which I really don't want to do. I do an MBA and, and I sit as a trailer uh, in, a, in a trailer in a uh, bank. So that's also uh, is something like a, uh, you know, disguise employment. I'm not doing really what I would like to do. And this is true at the lower level uh, too. And, and I think the proportion there is much more higher. So I think if we really have to find the happiness in our job, we should, we would, or we should like to ensure that we don't get into a disguise employment and we get an employment or something to do which will give happiness to uh, all of us. And as it said, today's time, it is uh, required that you should be a job provider than a job seeker. You should be a job provider job seeker rather than aap bahar ja ke job dhoondne dhoond rahe hai and uh, sabse jo mahatvapurna baat yahan par hai ki jo mai kaam karta hu meri jo activity rehti hai aur mai mera apne haath se jab khud karta hu to it gives me a tremendous amount of pleasure happiness self creation you will all uh, agree is the ultimate and highest satisfaction. Even if I start something and if I, if I do a uh, you know, sale of some few lakhs and that's my own activity, that, that satisfaction or that pleasure is more to me than any other activity. So out of sheer uh, you know, pleasure, satisfaction, I think one should get into an activity of his uh, of uh, his own. What is a startup? A startup. We have been reading a lot. We have been uh, you know seeing a lot on all media and talking a lot about startup. Basically, I feel that a business enterprise started for the first time is a startup. And at times there is a very wrong notion that, uh, you know, the startup, uh, the concept of startup came in this century, in the beginning of this century and all that. I don't agree with that because in earlier years also, in the last century also, uh, we have seen many, many startups. They were probably called as a small scale industry and some of them started as a small, big, became bigger, but all of them were startups. You know, the, uh, the companies like, uh, you know, Persistent Systems, Praj Industries, uh, Renu Electronics, and, uh, you know, many more. I can uh, keep on going with the list. These are all startups, but they started in the last century. So the end conclusion I can say is startup is any new activity started by uh, an individual and who would be mostly a first generation entrepreneur is starting some this kind of an enterprise or an activity first time uh, in his family. And many a times uh, we also say that as a startup is a new idea. It's something new, it's something uh, innovative. It, uh, you know, uh, one minute, huh? well, just to give a minute. This is the uh, startup uh, ecosystem. We know, uh, everybody knows a lot about it. We have to have our own technical and managerial skill, the entrepreneurial culture we have to bring in, we have to inculcate. The, we also need the uh, experienced mentors who would tell us because how to sail through this difficult waters of a uh, uh, startup. Then there is a regulatory environment which is telling us what to do and what not to do. Then, uh, you know, the, it's a collaborative culture which exists in a startup which ensures success for the startup. Then we see the success provided we adopt a right path and take the right kind of decisions and adopt the right strategy and all that. 
then of course uh, the risk which i we have talked about it one has to assume a larger amount of risk in any new activity and uh, of course to and to create all this kind of a system we need the financing we need the capital and hence there are these uh, you know uh, financial institutions developmental in institutions which are there to fund and to promote and to help the startup and they are also a important part of the startup uh, ecosystem for a startup an idea is a must when i want when i say that i want to be on my own i want to do something on my own that something is very important and i have seen that many of us get stuck there on that something and we are not in a position to define what is that something mai mai kuch khud ka karna chahta hu and that kuch is a very very bigger question in front of us and many get lost or many leave this idea of doing something of their own खुद का कुछ करने की जो आइडिया है वो पीछे रहती जाती है वो खाली ये कुछ है जो शब्द है वही पीछे उसको छोड़ देता है सो वॉट इज दैट दैट आइडिया ऑफ माई स्टार्टअप वन इज दैट आई हैव सम ड्रीम एंड दैट ड्रीम यू नो इज वेरी वेरी यू नो दरमिनी ड्रीम्स एंड ऑल दैट एंड इट इज से दैट follow your dream is the most dispensed with uh, advice given in all colleges in all graduation uh, ceremonies in all uh, you know uh, your uh, induction programs and different programs and we keep on uh, telling uh, youth and the students that follow your dreams there is nothing wrong in giving this advice the only thing which is wrong with this advice is it is not enough to say follow your dreams it is very important to tell how to follow your dreams and i think today's my lectures and the other lectures you'll have probably could be an attempt to tell you how to follow your dreams the startup idea uh, as i said that idea is very important because we want to make the startup uh, successful we want to take it uh, forward and uh, in fact uh, when this uh, government of india policy on startup came it uh, defined startup as something which comes out with an innovative kind of an idea or innovative business uh, you know uh, practice or a product this innovativeness uh, is very very uh, or the innovation is very very confusing term uh, very a term which frightens a lot of us and immediately we resort to a comparison between invention and innovation we feel that uh, you know like edison who invented the bulb electric bulb so that's the invention and i had to be thomas alva edison to come out with that kind of a product and unless and until i am intelligent i can't uh, uh, you know I, i'm very skillful i know the subject very well i know everything and i'm really good into invention and in, unless and until i invent somebody invent some something i can't be in a business but that's a totally wrong uh, you know notion and uh, as i said innovation is always mixed with invention and people think is innovation is also very hard like uh, you know invention and uh, you know very few really try to understand the meaning of uh, uh, you know the word innovation this is innovation i'm sure uh, uh, many of you might have got this picture in on your uh, you know uh, fb page or uh, you know whatsapp and everywhere that this has been very recently come and a uh, lot many have seen it the innovation here is uh, something the third rolling support for a bullock cart now the idea is very simple you know the bullock cart has been there for ages and it's been on running on the operating on the indian roads for ages earlier it was the wooden wheel which created lot of problems for in the construction and maintenance of road so somebody came with a innovative idea of instead of the wooden wheel let's have tires and that simplified 
that uh, you know made the problems uh, a bit uh, solved and it the movement becomes a bit easier but still the bullocks were carrying a very heavy weight on their uh, i won't say shoulders but on their necks and these poor animals were subjected to practical uh, cruelty and how this can be eliminated how these uh, uh, animals could be you know uh, uh, made comfortable and then this uh, the idea somebody thought of uh, coming out with the third rolling support for a bullock cart and especially the bullock cart uh, which carries the sugar cane and this came from students a team of students from rajaram bapu institute of technology kolapur they looked at this problem and then they came out with this uh, innovation it is said they have estimated that the load on the bullock's neck gets reduced by almost 80% so how comfortable it would be for the bullock and what would be the increase in the productivity of these animals they will move ahead much more faster than what they used to be earlier and the scope they say that uh, they estimate that in the state of maharashtra there are about 200 200 and plus sugar mills each one has roughly about 250 uh, you know bullock carts so if this kind of an innovation or uh, this kind of an equipment is uh, installed there it would help almost about 50000 uh, you know bullock carts and we are talking only about the state of maharashtra the situation is everywhere in the state of uh, in in the uh, in the country and uh, we have uh, up mp andhra and telangana karnataka where we have sugar mills and where this kind of an equipment would be required so a rough rough estimate can give tell us that there is a sick even if you take six like six days there could be a requirement of about three like uh, units of this uh, particular equipment and uh, if even if you take a profit of 100 per unit it will be something like 3 crore of profit that's a huge money which is there for somebody to go into its production so and so friends this is an innovation this is an observation that observation you know brought us to the innovation simply the students looked at this they thought of the problem that excess weight on the neck of the uh, of the animals and then they tried something and they came out with this and i am hope i hope that it will really help uh, uh, you know the uh, not only the sugarcane uh, you know transportation but uh, transportation of other products too the uh, talking about uh, the innovation the uh, you know Pablo Picasso has once said that good art is copy and great art is steal and i found that this is more appropriate in uh, innovation also and when we are discussing uh, the innovation uh, one has to look at this saying also and there has been a lot of debate and discussions on this and the criticism too but what really uh, pablo picasso said which has been explained very well by steve job also in one of his articles so to hear the true innovation uh, you know uh, this is uh, as i said is true in the innovation too because so said good artists and great artists work very differently you know good artists they see one art and they copy it and they create a copied kind of an art but um, uh, you know but that's a copied kind of an art but the great artist will look at that art will look at that thing and he will select some of the elements he will select the same elements in a, uh, for example in a picture like a water tree and an animal and some women or something and but and he will present in a different innovative way or innovative thing by applying his mind and that precisely the innovation which we are talking about you know even you know taking some idea thinking on it and trying to develop it further in a diff totally different way is innovation and there are uh, many examples for this even we talked about uh, we talk about the beautiful products of apple so apple did not create uh, 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 you know tablets they didn't bring tablet computing it was toshiba and other companies who first developed the tablet and apple looked at it apple you know uh, applied their uh, thought process 
and they identified certain problems in it and they came out with the you know ipads and the ipad is much more developed giving more comfort more uh, convenience and uh, you know utility to the users than what the original tablet was there so that's an innov innovation which totally took the concept of a tablet computing to an ipad same goes for google google was not first to start with the search engine the search e engine existed but in a different form and that they the uh, you know the google took it forward and uh, they innovated the entire concept of uh, search engine there is no such thing as a good idea and bad idea which is very true in uh, an uh, innovation which is very true in entrepreneurial uh, uh, you know enterprise or any activity which you are doing uh, the good or badness of anything is decided by the action taken by you uh, again uh, the creativity we many of us think that is something original there are very few creative people and the creativity doesn't come to each uh, you know to everybody it is a special uh, trait but that's not true creativity is uh, uh, you know there is a concept of borrowed creativity which i have explained to you in the case of uh, the apple ipod uh, uh, ipad so this concept uh, you know the cre creativity uh, you know is about re remixing the stuff taking ideas already exist and based on that uh, you know based on your reading your experiences your observations and all out or everything you come out with something new which is really creative because you have created created it though from something which is in existence today for an entrepreneur or uh, for an uh, you know the uh, any an entrepreneurial activity for that matter communication is most important fundamental skill you have to communicate to gather information to analyze the information to communicate it further to work on it so that becomes a very fundamental skill for an entrepreneur uh you know you have to take care of certain things as uh, the murphy's law says anything that can go wrong will go wrong so one has to be very very attentive mindful in whatever he is doing so you have to start uh, small because you know it is said that uh, in your activity you must face a uh, fail earlier and you know you must move ahead because fail failure at first step as i explained to you earlier teaches you so many things so you have to start small and then build upon uh, the whatever you have created you have to find a product market fit that is a product which is required by the market it is the need of the market and you have to find the uh, the fit which exists between your product and the market and then of course you have to think of a unique value proposition what your product will offer to the consumers how the value will add to their convenience their you know utility and other things uh friends it's uh, the journey of our entrepreneurship the journey of a startup is nothing but uh, of a uh, lot of effort patience punctuality practice and change keep on changing and in all that you have to be get engaged in that uh, totally wholeheartedly and you have to spend a lot of uh, you know uh, your time in your activity so friends it is said and uh, you know the situation sometimes uh, is like that uh, which makes us to say that is safar mein neend aisi kho gayi hum na soye raat thak kar so gayi is these are the uh, uh, lines of rahi masum raza and i like that that indicates how what kind of uh, efforts you have to take to have your own enterprise the subject of uh, entrepreneur uh, uh, you know the entrepreneurship the, and startup is very very vast uh, it's very difficult to uh, you know throw light on every each element and aspect of uh, that in 45 minutes uh, but i have tried my best and i think uh, uh, you could get something out of it which would help in moving ahead in your uh, you know effort of uh, on your own or creating your, your own startup thank you very much
Thank you, Dr. Anand. Very nice lecture, very informative lecture. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I so can. Before I ask Gaurav to take questions, I'm told that there are a lot of students from BBA of our uh, SPPU campus are joined and other entrepreneurs also, and some few soldiers also. Uh, I'm very happy, you know, uh, that you cleared my doubt because a few months back when I was attending the PhD presentation, topic selection presentation, you know, people have a wrong idea. Ki startup means you have to have a technology background. But you have cleared that, you know, it is not like that. It's anybody winning, having a new idea and trying to convert that idea into viable business is a startup. I think that is what uh, you said. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Very good. Good, good. So, Gaurav, I think it's a time for uh, audience to take questions and we have good time over half an hour at least. More yes, than sir, that. yes, sir. So, kindly... And let the students... Are, I, I, I first welcome all the students of our BBA. Uh, then uh, the director also, Dr. Deepa, has also joined. Thank you for joining. It's a good learning. So, questions? Yeah, so kindly please raise your hand, those who want to ask questions, so we can go in sequence. Uh, Dr. Deepa, you want to ask? Uh, so first, I want to uh, thank uh, Mr. Deshmukh Anand, sir, for our, it was a very invigorating uh, session, sir. Um, yeah, I think I'll make the little students ask questions first, but uh, there is one thing here I would want to ask between all the slides which you had shown, sir, that uh, what are the two things which you really recommend because many of our students get into entrepreneurship even after doing a graduate program. Uh, so they are around 20 to 21 when they pass out. Um, the good thing is I think uh, they have uh, the hope and the fear is lesser. Uh, they're ready to try. So if two things which they should have complete clarity before uh, uh, getting into a bandwagon of entrepreneurship, what are the two things you think they should focus on? Because we do teach EV activity even during uh, our curriculum, but uh, doing it and absolutely applying in real life are two different things. So what would you suggest to them, sir? First and foremost, uh, I feel that uh... One should know the ikigai of your life, yeah. you know, the professional life. Okay. What is the purpose of your uh, uh, life? And when I say life, uh, especially with reference to the youngsters like you, the major part of your life is your career and what you would like to do with your uh, profession or career. So you should be very clear about it. And having made yourself very clear about that, you, you have to have a determination that I have accepted this and uh, I will move ahead with that. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, and that, that uh, for that matter only, I mentioned Jamnalal Bajaj motto, that Kathani Karni Eksi, that whatever you say, it has to be, uh, you know, you have to walk that and you have to do that. And I, I, I am also a culprit uh, and I know there are many like me who keep on changing what they want to be in their life, uh, you know, from right from starting from an engineer, doctor and computer specialist and army officer and the you know, list goes up. And you, we are not uh, you know, decided as to what really want. And then uh, if I decide that sticking to that and that determination has to be there. And you have to, uh, again, you have to, uh, you know, you, whatever dream you have, you have to follow that dream. Okay, thank Anand, you. Can I say one or two things here right now? Yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Deepa, yes, sir. A good question you asked on behalf of your students. There are two things from my side. I think the need for achievement, need to become entrepreneur has to be very strong in the mind of students. Because when we ask this question in the classroom, they most of them say yeah, they want to be entrepreneur. But when you ask, what is your project? Do you have anything in your mind? Then they are big zero. I think if somebody is thinking of becoming entrepreneur, he or she has to have a project and at least start doing homework. That is one I personally feel. And since uh, Dr. Anand has given a reference of Ikigai this morning only during Pranayama follow-up, our teacher has given a reference of Ikigai because last few days he is talking about Ikigai only. One is uh, uh, flow. 
what exactly you want and what you want, what you like, you must think about it, right? And then concentrate on that. And that particular flow should continue in your life. That is what the Ikigai also talks about. I'm told, right? And, and purpose of life, that is okay. I mean, that you have to be very clear what you want to be. And good. Yeah. There are a lot of... Uh, yeah, questions. we have questions. Uh, so we'll take start one by with one. Josna Godobole, madam, then Harsh and then Aryan. Godobole, madam, is an uh, industrialist with solar in the background. Yes, Krishna yes. Madam, yes. Question, Hello, uh, Ambedkar, sir. Oh. Me, you all have a question. Yes, sir. I have a question for you. I have a question for you. You can tell us directly. You can tell us directly. You can tell us directly. उपलब्ध होती स्वत मत है कि स्वतरी तैयार करावी कारण आज इतक मटेरियल इतक अवेलेबल है इंटरनेट वर सोलर मैन्युफैक्चरर्स ची एक असोसिशन है मैन्युफैक्चरर्स ऑफ सोलर इक्विपमेंट्स प्रेसिडेंट आई एम फर्गेटिंग इज नेम ऑफलाइन तुम्हें जर माला कॉन्टैक्ट के आई वुड बी एबल ऑलरेडी मेम्बर है लघु उद्योग डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंडस्ट्री ऑफिस है तुम्हारा का अद्यावत अपडेट आजूबाजूला पुष्क असोसिशन दुसर पिंपरी चिंत चिंसव स्मॉल स्केल इंडस्ट्रीज सॉरी फॉर इंटर कुछ लोगों के माइक्स चालू है तो उसके वजह से उनका आवाज आ रहा है तो बराबर क्लियरली सुन नहीं पा रहे हैं सर गौरव एवरीबॉडी काइंडली म्यूट योर सिस्टम थैंक यू क्वेश्चन वन बाय वन नाउ जोर से बात करना आवाज कम आ रहा है Yeah, so generally, when you have an idea, you need to disclose it uh, for getting funds when you need investors. And in case if they don't invest, your idea is actually uh, being shared. Then sometimes we do have the practice of uh, signing like a non-disclosure agreement, but still there are many loopholes in it. So how can you actually get funds from people without revealing your business idea? Thank you. See, the idea needs to be tested. If you are uh, familiar with the uh, computer uh, systems and computers and softwares and all that, you know even the this thing we have something like what we call as a beta version that we develop something, and with a select group of uh, maybe twenty, twenty five, thirty, fifty, we try test that idea. Uh, this thing also can happen uh, in a manufactured product that you can get the product done, and uh, you know uh, offer it to somebody to test and all that. and uh, then try it and uh, if that can give an indication to you as to what is the accepted acceptability for your product or services and all that and uh, as you rightly mentioned yes uh, there is a non disclosure agreement but it's uh, many a times sometimes uh, you know it's only on the paper but you have to be very discreet and you have to take care that the important technology or important thing which is there in it is only with you and it's not properly uh, disclosed and that's uh, also a skill 
and basically if you present your idea uh, in a different format you don't have to go into almost detail what is the product uh, what uh, utility it has got what services it offers what could be the market for that what is the current market and how you would uh, you know exploit the market for that these are the major things one investors uh, looks at and i think uh, i don't think many of them would go into deeper into the technology part of it or the finer uh, you know uh, details of your product but as i said you have to protect yourself if you feel the product is good and there is a possibility of getting copied and all that it could be better for go for patenting it first get it patented and then try the patenting also is uh, as is not that difficult uh, today because the government of india takes care of 50% of expenses which is being uh, spent on in that process and of course uh, the startups and uh, you know the small uh, entrepreneurs and enterprises do get uh, this kind of an assistance i i hope i have answered you because i couldn't hear you properly yes i got it got it thank you very much okay i think we can move on to aryan aryan over to you and then rimit first aryan please come in um yes am i audible yeah great good evening sir this is aryan from third year in bba and i'd like to start by saying that this is a very enlightening and delineated session about entrepreneurship but i just had a few questions about it so um the first one is that you mentioned that less than 2% businesses have uh, more than 5 employees so why do you think so many businesses fail to escape the basic phase where they can't employ more than 5 people yeah there are still these are the smaller because you know as i said the many of the businesses which are there they employ only one because those are very very tiny kind of a, uh, you know enterprises or businesses and all that and uh, they don't need uh, the uh, you know the owner himself has that skill and he works on that and provide those kind of uh, services and products and all that a bigger organization uh, organization in that uh, the employment employability has always been lesser than 10 because of the typical you know the legal framework we had for quite some time it is easing now but you know earlier we had so many labor laws and number i need not tell you but there were some uh, very very restrictive kind of an things in that if you do this then this apply act applies to you you then if you go, uh, employ so many people then this will get uh, and uh, you know all these things the compliance as well as the other things put a burden on the uh, you know the businessman or the entrepreneur so it creep he uh, tries to keep the number of employees minimum and all that and uh, as everywhere globally also if you will see there are more number of micro small and medium enterprises than the larger uh, companies and all that so in any micro small and medium enterprises the uh, as the work schedule differs so is the need of uh, you know uh, workers and all that and you know it always uh, the scale of uh, uh, you know employment is lower so there are reasons like this and typically in any economy you will find that that more number of smaller enterprises and very few uh, of larger enterprises because we work in a structure of uh, you know one is what we call as a uh, original equipment manufacturer oem and below oem there are tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 Uh, uh you know work uh, 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 organizations which we have to whom the work is outsourced and they work in uh, on different uh, parts and products and services and all that and these are all small that's why the number get restricted to less number of uh, and in the current scenario uh, global as well as the uh, you know domestic as well as uh, everywhere and uh, going by the technology other thing the trend is to have lesser number and uh, get more productivity through employing new right. technology and more number of uh, you know uh, you know things like uh, as i mentioned earlier the artificial intelligence and uh, uh, sensors and uh, uh, getting into industry 4.0 and all that right thank you thank you sir rimit over to you rimit come in uh, good evening sir uh, sir i am audible yes 
सर आई एम रमित कुमार फ्रॉम बी बी एच एफ एम थर्ड ईयर सर माई क्वेश्चन टू यू इज दैट सर वॉट यू थिंक वॉट आर द बिगेस्ट चैलेंजेस दैट एन एंटरप्रन फेस इज वर्ल्ड स्टार्टिंग योर बिजनेस एंड सर आई वॉन्ट टू एट वन मोर इट सर आई वॉन्ट टू आस्ट दैट हाउ हाउ कैन बी मैनेज स्ट्रेस ओके न्यू मैनेजर ओके the challenges of course first is uh, the acceptance of your idea or your product and the second most uh, you know bigger or important challenge is organizing the activity for commercializing the commercialization of your product or your product or service everywhere you know money plays an important uh, role and uh, because you even if you start uh, with minimum uh you know everything and uh, the on a low, very low scale you need money you mean need money to get uh, your raw material you get money to manufacture you need, need money to uh, uh, do marketing to move heavier and that so that's the biggest uh, challenge that uh, you know once having seen that the idea is good and it can sell it can be commercialized the next big challenge is how to organize funding for that and then after that also the problems or challenges doesn't end they keep on uh, you know uh, extending in different directions thank you thank you so uh, others who want to ask thank a you, question sir. kindly raise your hand any more questions that would be coming in so i would like to ask you sir a quick question anand sir from your sure. you know strong career of 40 years who has personally impressed you which industrialist thank you which industrialist yes hmm. which industrialist has impressed <laughs> it's, you you may it's uh, very difficult to uh, it's very difficult to say because each uh, industrialist is again an individual so he has got different kind of uh, traits and characteristics and uh, you know qualities and of course negative points too and uh, and each and every activity uh, you know differ their different kind of uh, uh, skills and other things are required but i would say uh, the uh, one of the most uh, admired uh, industrialist for me would be rahul kumar bajaj because i have worked with him and i have seen his uh, way of handling the things his determination and uh, you know his uh, you know communication communication with everybody employees and you know dealers and all that and uh, you know the confidence which he carried and all that uh, i think i like that uh, uh, the most and uh, i have learned so many things from him and when initially i had started my career uh, you know in somewhere i have also written that my first uh, philosophy of work was that i will always work at a place where uh, there is uh, you know opportunity to do things on your own there is nobody to tell me ki you should do this this way and that way so i will have that kind of an independence i will have opportunity to develop that activity there and uh, then because i thought that would be a good uh, learning for me and i that's why i started with uh, many companies uh, uh, with who uh, where such challenges were there like i started one job where hr was department was not established so i established the hr department i started with one project which was not implemented which was even on the project profile stage and there i work with a you know technocrat of a very well, re, good repute and all that and from him also from his way of working though he was a technocrat and had no uh, you know the i would say the big business uh, uh kind of a uh, uh, this thing experience and all uh, not experience really the skills i would say certain skill but uh, he i learned so many things from him and his name was dr vb ghate and that was my uh, one of the first job and that, before that also i work in a pharmaceutical company where you know uh, we had the chief of uh, administration where i worked that yeah, that gentleman also his name was gg prabhu he was also and the company was fdc limited a pharmaceutical company and he was a bcom but uh, his business sense and his way of handling was i should say it taught me so many things uh, which i practice in my life thank you sir thank you so much 
So if may I ask, I have one more question yes, actually. Yes, this boy. is what students mainly ask us is what do, um, because there's a lot of ideas. We are in a term where everyone wants to have uh, uh, become an entrepreneur and uh, startups are new. It's, but finally it's idea is one, but it finally boils down to finance. So, so um, I mean, if you could get some tips that if you think I have an idea, which is very much worth to explore and not all, um, uh, startups have finances. So where do where do they reach for finances? Madam, uh, there is a famous song that Upparwala Jabbi Deta Deta Chappar Fad Ke. So who is that Upparwala? The Upparwala is one who understands what you want to do, who understands you as how and what you will be able to do. And uh, if he is convinced, I think uh, there is only not one Upparwala today. Fortunately, there are many. In our times, Getting uh, into a business was very, very difficult because everybody uh, moved with a concept that business always from a person who is not from business family is going to be a failure. Still, we have, uh, you know, people like uh, I earlier mentioned, I will, there are many names. I'm just uh, the names which are in front of me because of my book and all that is uh, Dr. Anand Deshpande of Persistent, though he studied in the US and he came here. But he started in a room of 250 square feet with one computer. Then, uh, you know, even uh, Pramod Chaudhary, he also started in a flat of one room and with one telephone and this thing. They all had problems. They, they were not from business family. The finances were not there. But one was, uh, you know, perseverance and they had the idea. They can take the idea forward and they could uh, get uh, all the help which they required. Of course, there are ups and downs and there are challenges and all that, then one has to learn about that. But today, comparatively, it's much more easier. Uh, I've seen people starting with uh, uh, even a funding of 25,000. Uh, I have visited some incubators and all that where uh, people from you know the rural uh, India, they are doing some activities and all that. Which they had absolutely no money but they have started in an incubator and all that, and they are moving ahead. And uh, there are many investors, there are, uh, you know, good, uh, uh, um, you know, high net worth individuals who are ready to invest, provided uh, you have a good idea and they get convinced that this idea will sell. Uh, even the government of India has uh, own uh, you know, startup uh, fund of funds and the CDB is there, you get seed capital, there are incubators who offer funding and all that. So there are, uh, you know, uh, umpteen number of so resources which are available. One has to really uh, look out for them. Right. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. It's just that, are there some uh, specific site or something where it's, it's good to put out the ideas because that's something which they... Yeah, yeah, I mean, it is. There are plenty of them. There right age, you know, to explore and they have to keep trying. So there are certain things where they should send their plan or the business plan. It'll be nice. Yeah, service. yeah even government of India's site, www.startupindia.co.gov.in, something, you know, missing. That gives a lot of information that gives listing of incubator, that gives list of, listing of all the schemes which are available. There are incubators. If we, since we are talking in Pune, there are incubators like uh, you know the uh, you know the NCL's uh, incubator is there. There is a, a science and technology centers incubator in University of Pune. Uh, Bau uh, is there in uh, College of Engineering, and there are many many um, I think you know colleges which have started incubators and all that. And uh, we have on campus also, no? Science and yes, 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 yes. Yeah, we they have. Provide, yeah, and they provide a lot of uh, information on this and um, yes, all sir. these sites, uh, this thing. Or and uh, Anand, I think uh, on our Thank university you. also, we give we back up uh, startups, no? Yeah, Apu yes. Apalsa, uh, is there. I heard, I read that the, the you know, five lakhs of uh, seed capital is being provided to good ideas yeah, yes, and all that yes, they sir. recently started. So if, if yeah. I like is also a good amount of money to start yes, with. Yes, sir. Very much. Very much. Thank you, sir. Since Deepa, you opened this topic for your students, let me share, you know, very recently, one uh, Kathale madam from Pune Brahma, Bangalore, she approached me. In fact, 
three, four years back, I organized one lecture at Pumba. She is actually IT professional, but started a Maharashtrian cuisine at uh, Bangalore. And right now, I think she has two, three franchisees abroad. What she was talking, if there is a need to have specialization in Indian cuisine and Maharashtra, Maharashtrian cuisine. So she is looking for a partner where she can introduce this as a specialization, just for a thought. I already talked with Saili Gankar, who is a vice chancellor of DY Bachar Ambi. You can also give a thought on this. I think that's a good idea. No? Yeah. So, so much happening. Yes, sir. Fantastic. Um, I mean, and uh, let me share, let me take this opportunity to share with your students because I never talked to them in recent past. When our disabled soldiers can also become a starter, they get yes. an idea and they do something good like one of our disabled soldiers who is 60% disabled and right now he is working for Pune Metro. He is working as a contractor for Chandler and uh, he has already installed more than 500 uh, escalators all over Delhi, Mumbai. He has got contract in Bangalore. So he is about 80 uh, people working with him. A lot of good success stories huh? at that level. Yeah. And uh, Madam... Uh... You know, today the concept of crowdfunding is also catching up pretty fast. So if you know, and if the crowd, if you have around you, which feels that you can do this uh, thing, the fund flows in. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And any startup bootstrapping is very important that you have to start with your fund of your own, your relatives, friends, and, uh, you know, yeah. others. Yes, oh, no, any question? Pending. Thank you, both of you also. Uh, oh, very, uh, thank you very much. You motivated your student to join. I think this will be beneficial. Yes, Next sir. time, probably, I will have an offline lecture. Yeah, I'm trying to sir, get uh, Vice Chancellor of uh, Gokhale Institute, the economist. Sir, we have a question from Smita Soni. Oh, Smita. Yeah. yeah please. Hello, sir. In your book, I have read Cockroach Entrepreneurship. Oh. Yeah. So, it's a weird word. Can you explain that, sir? Thank you. Cockroach, you know, have you ever observed a cockroach? The cockroach can live in any kind of an environment. It can, you know, it can live anywhere it wants. Please, please, Hello? unmute. Unmute, sir. Unmute, can okay. continue, sir. So uh, the, the idea is that, uh, you know, even if you the environment is not suitable to you, even... There is uh, no food or that means no resources, very limited resources. But still, you live for a longer period with all those limited resources. And in a startup, basically, you know, as I have mentioned in my book, uh, you know, you have to start on a smaller scale. And one important thing which needs to be uh, observed and which needs to be done is that control your expenses. Uh, there is a, a term in startups and all that, which is called as a cash burning, which happens at a later stage of the startup. But initially, when you are establishing, uh, you have to be very, very conservative, preservative with your, uh, uh, you know, finances and all the resources, money and everything. That's basically, in short, the co cockroach uh, approach, which is there. And if you have read the book, I think I have uh, explained it in more details in the book. But the crux of the matter is that, you know, uh, preserve your uh, resources always. Anand, I have presented this book to speakers of my last seminar, which I organized on uh, uh, birth anniversary of uh, Santana And Smita was one of the speakers there. Yes, I was about to mention that, sir. <laughs> <laughs> And thank you so much. It's a beautiful book. Moreover, yeah. because it's written in Marathi, I am also thinking of gifting it to a few people in my network. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank I you, do appreciate sir. Thank you, In sir. Book Ganga, you get that confessional rate. Oh, the, the, oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got that confession. That's why I'm sharing. <laughs> कारण इंग्लिश पाहिलं की पुस्तक बाजूला ठेवणारे काही लोक आहेत दोन्ही पुस्तक मी पुस्तक आणि दोन्ही पुस्तक मी मराठीतच आणली होती काय लेट मी टेल यू फर्दर की मला पुष्कळ असे फीडबॅक आले की लोकांना आजकाल वाचायला आवडत नाही तर तुम्ही सांगा 
आणि ते सुद्धा भाषण करू नका पण युट्यूब वर या म्हणून मी माझं युट्यूब एक चॅनल सुरू केलेलं आहे उद्योग उद्योजकता आणि स्टार्ट अप अँड त्याचे पहिला भाग झालेला तर दुसरा येईल तर आय इंटेंड टू कवर दिस इम्पॉर्टंट टॉपिक ऑफ स्टार्ट अप प्रोवायडिंग लॉड ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन टिप्स अँड गायडन्स अँड एव्हरीथिंग सो प्लीज डू सबस्क्राईब टू दॅट चॅनल आय एम शुअर यू विल लर्न लॉड ऑफ थिंग्स इन दॅट टू Dr. Anand, I just want to give you one suggestion. Maybe from 1st of September, we are planning one uh, entrepreneurship development program for families of soldiers of QMTI yeah. and soldiers, of course, because uh, it was long pending sponsor program. So the Jaja Mahila hit. Then just said, if you can get some information about this SSG, your small Mahila group. काय काय केलंय त्यांच्या लेवलला आपण स्टार्टअप काय करू शकता असं जर एक तू सेशन तयार केलंस तर आय थिंक गेट यू इन दॅट पर्टिक्युलर प्रोग्राम अजून प्रोग्राम फायनल करायचा पण माझ्या मनात आहे की तू एक सॉरी आय एम कॉलिंग यू तू एन ऑल बी आर फ्रेंड वी आर फ्रॉम सेम सेंट एन एम बी दुजन मराठी विद्यालय सेम बॅच फाईन तर तुझा एक लेक्चर ठेवतो मी त्याच्यात नक्की है ना गौरव काही क्वेश्चन असेल गौरव गौरव सॉरी टू इंटर क्वेश्चन हिअर इन चॅट इट इज फ्रॉम ऋषिकेश दातार टू एव्हरी वन बट लेट मी टेक द लिबर्टी ऑफ दॅट एव्हरी वन बींग मी चान्सेस फॉर द ग्रोथ फॉर द ऍडव्हर्टाइजमेंट बिझनेस इन करंट सिच्युएशन स्पेसिफिकली इन थिएटर ऍडव्हर्टाइजमेंट and uh, yes there is tremendous uh, you know opportunities in that also there are many startups uh, you know which are uh, called as passion startups which are coming out of the passion of an individual there are you know many women who have started uh, you know some cookery classes and uh, you know some other activities and all that and uh, even there is an economy which is called as uh, you know the developers economy and that's precisely uh, you do something of uh, your interest and develop a business out of that in this advertisement also so many things can be done you have to think about that how to do ek, that ek chota sa reference deto yeah it not for advertisement as such but ek sangam ne the bada pav wale bhanga prasiddh jalele miya baba aikla asel tum kay khata ka pita इतकं त्याचं हे झालंय प्रसार की लोक मला वाटतं संगम जाता येतात थांबतातच आणि त्याचं ते शूटिंग करून पाठवत असतात या पॅन्डेमिक मध्ये फारच फेमस झाला मी आहे कोणतरी छान आहे म्हणजे छोटे छोटे उद्योग एखादे एकदम काय नेता का खाता का पिता पिता म्हणजे पाण्याची बाटली भयंकर वेगाने द्या असं भयंकर वेगाने म्हणा गौरव आजचा कार्यक्रम खूपच छान झाला मेन मला एक आवडलं की उद्योजकांना एक खूप चांगला सल्ला तुम्ही दोघांनी दिला न कळत दोघही नुमवीचे आहात गडू राष्ट्र उद्याचे हाती घ्याल ते तडीस न्या हा एक मोठा आहे मंत्र हाती घ्याल ते तडीस न्या येस येस सो ऑन दिस नोट आय गिव्ह माय वोट ऑफ थँक्स टू आर स्पीकर अँड ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट ऑलमोस्ट टेन टू फिफ्टीन industrialist businessmen and small entrepreneurs also joined students also thank you for joining thank you so much thank you thank you anand thank you very thank much thank you very much my pleasure thank you sir okay thank you sir